one being the academic support two having your cohort like your social friends who are in the program and three the many opportunities being a millennium scholar afford you up everyone welcome back to my channel road to phd my name is kimberly and i'm so excited to have you here today if you're new to this channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it will help other people just like you find this video and while you're there might as well give it a like today is another installment of my new series this is what a scientist looks like and i'm so happy to have a friend here to share with you about the penn state millennium scholars program Today, I have my friend here, Teniola, and uh, Tenny for short. She's going to be telling you all about the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program. Tenny, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Teniola Ido. I'm from PG County, Maryland. I went to Penn State for undergrad, where I got my degree in microbiology with a minor in sociology. Currently, I'm a first year graduate student at NYU in their microbiology training program. Isn't she awesome? Thank you so much, Tenny, for introducing yourself. How did you hear about the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program? What enticed you to accepting their offer? So I actually heard about the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program via an email. So the program was still relatively new going into its fourth year when I applied to the program. And essentially what happened was that after I applied to Penn State, the University Park campus as a science major, I got an email from the program within like 24 to 48 hours just saying, hello, we are the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program and we're based off of the Meyerhoff Program at UMBC. So being from Maryland, I was already familiar with the Meyerhoff program. So off the bat, I was just like, I'm definitely going to apply to this program at Penn State. And essentially, it's a program for high achieving high school students who want to get into graduate school in the STEM field. So PhD, MD, PhD. And ultimately, what made me want to join one was the financial aspect. It is a scholarship. So and I advise all high school students, honestly, go where the money is. You don't want to get into much debt for like your undergraduate or like your bachelor's degree. So but outside of the scholarship, the program offers really strong academic support. So at the interview weekend, they stress how you have like a millennium advisor, you have a millennium tutor, and then you have like your cohort members who can all help support you and you can support each other throughout your process. So essentially, they have the support and you have a team of people already in your corner as a freshman who are going to help you to get into top graduate programs of your choice. And it's just great to know that especially as a first generation student that I have people in my corner already rooting for me as a freshman. So it was really just that extra support and the money, obviously, that really made me want to accept the offer to join the program. LOL, I feel you. Literally all of those reasons contributed to why I chose to become a Karstam Scholar. What advice would you give students who are applying to the program right now? So the advice I would give to students is to take the essay seriously. You have to remember there's so many different great students with high GPAs, really good extracurricular activities. So one area of your application that you can really stand out and make yourself memorable is through how you respond to the essay prompt. So make sure to take those seriously. Don't wait to the last minute to do them. Honestly, don't because you're going to hate writing them if you have to rush to do it. It's actually more fun if you really take the time, maybe make an outline and really convey your passion. So I would say be really thoughtful in your response. Make sure you have a really strong personal voice so that when they read your essay, it's like, wow, like I remember this person. I remember so and so. So make sure like you emphasize your passion for science science your passion for hopefully getting into a top graduate program and really like when you're reading your essay like you should really feel proud of it you know what I'm saying so make sure you take the time to really think about it and make sure you get it edited there's nothing worse than reading an essay that has a bunch of like gram grammatical errors punctuation marks not in the right place so take your time on those and don't think that that's not as important it's just as important if not more in order to make you stand out from the thousands of students who are probably applying to the program and then my second piece of advice would be make sure you get strong letters of recommendation so don't just go to any teacher or any professor that you have. Go to people, preferably in science, who can vouch for your skills in a science course, who can write really strong things on your behalf. And maybe sometimes um, when you're asking for letters of recommendation, you can ask the person you're asking to talk about something specific. Maybe talk about your potential to being a great college student, your potential as a scientist. 
this, that, and the third. So make sure you really take initiative in seeking out really strong people to recommend you because between your essays and your recommendation letters, that can really enhance your application. Let's say you don't have the best GPA. Those can bring it up and they can make you stand out. So definitely take those two aspects seriously. So if you feel like you haven't found people who can write your letters right now, make sure you're establishing those relationships with different people so that when the time comes, you can even have options, you know, to just pick and choose from people who you think can write really good things about you. Yep exactly i hope y'all are taking notes if you're watching this i hope you're taking notes tenny can you tell me if you had any research experience in high school if you did any programs so personally i did not have any research experience in high school um i know it can be kind of hard to get into formal research programs as a high schooler so if you don't have that then it's absolutely fine it's not really going to be a negative to your application but if you are able to get those opportunities definitely do them and it'll only enhance you um, overall. But what I will say though, is to definitely get involved um, in extracurricular activities, get involved in leadership positions in particular. Um, for me, I did a lot during the summer, such as volunteering and also doing a lot of pre-collegiate um, programs, one at Howard and also another one at UMD where I took like college level science and math courses. So definitely look, up for those, look out for those different opportunities and take advantage of them because it's great to be able to talk about that in your application. I completely agree. Both Tenya and I didn't have any research um, experience in high school, and we both were still in research intensive programs. So there's definitely hope, don't give up, as Tenny mentioned. And if you have any inkling to do a summer research program as a high school student, please check out this video right here where I talk about summer internships, research internships for high school students, specifically juniors and seniors. Tenny, do you have any advice to give any students watching this about the interview? Um, for the interview, I would say, as cliche as it sounds, honestly, to just be yourself, be authentic to who you are. You want to remember with this program, they don't want only students who are going to succeed in STEM, but they also want students who are committed to increasing the diversity that you see in STEM. So essentially, they pick a diverse cohort of students to join um, the next class. And when I say that, I mean diversity in race, ethnicity, religion, tradition, so many different aspects. So you would honestly be doing yourself a disservice if you're not being authentic to who you are or if you're trying to pretend to be like some type of model student that you think they're looking for. So definitely show up as who you are, show up as who you represent in that application because at this point, if you've made it to their interview, great job like that's a big accomplishment you have the stats you have the gpa you look it on paper so at this point it's really just can you fit into the community can you fit into the millennium scholars community because as a scholar you're not only expected to do well academically you're expected to help other people in your cohort to support each other at our highest and our lowest moments so they want to see are you that type of person and what can you bring to the table so be yourself and i guess my last piece of advice or second is um don't be that person who's just listing off their resume and their CV the whole time. Nobody likes to talk to those people because at the end of the day, like you're all there for a reason. You're all accomplished. So it's really just, can you just flow? Can you have a conversation? Whether it be about science, your passions, other things, maybe outside of school. Just be authentic and make sure to take advantage of every opportunity to talk to like your other interviewees, other scholars in the program, and even faculty who may not be interviewing you. Because everything you do that weekend is a part of the interview process. It may not be your formal interview but it's a part of the process. So make sure you're leaving impressions and planting seeds amongst many different people. So at the end of the day, when they're coming to decide who should be in the program, you have many people who can vouch for you, who can say, hmm, like I talked to this person and I can say this about them. So take advantage of every opportunity. Remember that you're always being watched. I don't say that to scare you, but I just say that so that you should always have your game face on and just have fun. Like they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them. So always come prepared with a few questions as well, just to show that you're engaged and that you've also done your research. Yep, I 100% agree. Your interpersonal skills have to be A1. Please don't change who you are that day. Please don't. What makes the program special? Sorry, y'all, I lost the clip. Honestly, this program is special for so many different reasons. And honestly, like as an alumni now, I'm appreciating it even more when like you're not in it as much. And I would say I would highlight three different things. One being the academic support, two, having your cohort, like your social friends who are in the program, and three, the many opportunities being a Millennium Scholar afford you. 
So starting with the academic support, like I mentioned earlier, you have Millennium Tutors. We call them Millennium Tutors. And it's basically just other Millennium Scholars who have taken the classes that you're taking right now and they act as your tutor. So you would have like formal tutoring sessions with them. And it's just nice because they've gone through what you're going through now. And it's good to have somebody who's experienced what you've gone through to like tutor you and to help prepare you for exams and things of that nature. And then on top of that, you also have a Millennium Advisor who helps you with your grades, helps to point you to different resources if you're not doing so well. And they can also be your biggest cheerleader like when you're doing exceedingly well so it was just nice because you have a strong team of like your fellow students and also an advisor who's looking out for you and that was helpful for me because I didn't do like I wasn't feeling so hot like my freshman year and it was nice to have an advisor who like kept me going because I was so close to changing my major so it was just nice to have somebody saying no you got this you're gonna do it and look at where I'm at today and I'm so grateful for that and then the second thing I want to say is your cohort members. Like I was in cohort four, you know, the best cohort, no shade. But essentially, um, you come into Penn State, you come into college with like 20 something other people who are going to be going through the same things as you, who are going to be taking the same classes as you. And it was nice to go into these classes, especially being like at a PWI, having people who already look like me going through the same struggles as me. And immediately off the jump, like we would have our own like study sessions, our own study groups. So it was just really nice to have that support. And a lot of them are still my friends now and I can't wait to be able to call them like my colleagues in the future so that's another aspect and then the last thing I would say is just the reputation of the program affords a lot of different opp opportunities so being a scholar like a lot of the faculty in some of the classes that I would take um, they were already familiar with the program so they would have high expectations of me and I personally like that because it makes me work harder it makes me put out like better work but then on top of that, the program, because of its reputation, they bring in a lot of different like recruiters or just people who come from different companies and schools and institutions to talk to us about their opportunities and stuff. And it was through these different like seminars that I actually landed on um, a summer internship. So they actually had a representative from a biotech company known as Genentech come in, I think my well, my sophomore year. And it was through that seminar and following up with the rep that I was able to land a summer internship at that company. So. The many speakers that they bring in can help clarify the career paths you want to take, what you need to do to get into good programs, and maybe like the career choices that you're going to take after being done with the program. So that's a really great aspect. And it really showed me what I can do with the PhD, which is what I really needed at the time. What was your favorite summer research program? Okay, so honestly, I've had some really great summer experiences, but I would have to say, um, NYU was definitely my favorite summer RU because it was just a great like balance of work and play. It was my first time doing research in microbiology essentially so I was actually worked in the lab of Dr. Ana Rodriguez where they study malaria and specifically my project focused on cerebral malaria so I had never worked with parasites before so I was excited. I felt like a kid in the candy store and by the end of the summer the parasites were literally like my babies because you literally work for them and you kind of have to tend to them because you need them for your projects so I had great mentors there and um the program itself is just it's just so well done so in addition to doing research we would have seminars every wednesday um about different careers in science maybe scientific writing learning different skills and then also we had a lot of diversity um seminars where we talked about how can we promote diversity and promote an inclusive environment and that's one of the main reasons why i ended up going to nyu because they do have things in place to help increase the diversity and the inclusivity of the stem field and Outside of that, just being in the city was fun. The program not only provided us with great research, but they gave us the opportunity to really explore and enjoy New York City. So they took us to Broadway. They took us to a bunch of different restaurants in the city. They took us to the Bronx Zoo. And it was just a great time. And it was about 30 of us. And I promise you, they picked like the best group of people because the class, NYU, SERP 19, phenomenal. Thank you all for the great time. So it was just nice because you really got to experience what a career as a scientist could be like. You're doing research, but at the same time, when you're done with work, you can go out and have a good time. And we got to present our research um, at the Leadership Alliance National Symposium in Connecticut at the end of the summer. Where we did an oral presentation, and then we also had our NYU poster presentation. And it was just a nice way to network, build your networks within the scientific community, talk to other faculty. And it was just a nice like icing on the cake after doing all the work that you did for the summer. So... Definitely one of my favorite experiences for sure. <laughs> As a native of Jersey City, I am so happy to hear that you experienced and enjoy New York City. And so that warms my heart. What is a skill that you developed during the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program that you think will be the most beneficial to you in the future? 
it would definitely have to be asking questions and utilizing all of my resources. So coming into college, honestly, I was a hothead. I came in, I'm just like, I'm going to get a 4.0 every semester. Nobody can stop me. I'm going to be great. I was humbled. And chemistry and physics were the two classes that humbled me. To this day, I can't even speak chemistry without feeling some type of way. But essentially, I came in with a lot of pride. And thanks to talking to like my advisor, my millennium advisor and stuff, I realized that I need to stop being ashamed of not maybe not being able to understand everything. And I need to stop being ashamed of struggling. Because when you think about it, everybody struggles. If you struggle on that homework set, that doesn't make you dumb. It doesn't make you less than. What's dumb is if you struggle and you continue to struggle without asking the right questions to get help and utilizing your resources such as your TAs and stuff. So it was after I realized that it's okay to ask questions in class, even if you feel like it's a basic question, as long as it's going to help you to better understand the material, don't be afraid to ask that question. Don't be afraid to be that person because at the end of the day, like we're all trying to be successful. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there in a position that you may feel is less than to get what you need to get out of that class. So I learned to ask questions and when I say make use of your resources, I say to go to those TA sessions, utilize your TAs, utilize those guided study sessions. Don't ever think you're too good for that because I used to think I was too good. I should be able to figure it out on my own. But I realized that no, ask those questions, use your resources because remember it's coming out of your tuition in one way, shape or form. So you might as well use what's being paid for on your behalf. So that's one thing. And it's beneficial to the future because as a scientist, you have to ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Like it's asking the proper questions and being able to build the proper experiments around those questions that lead to really amazing discoveries. So never feel ashamed to be that person. If you have to ask multiple questions, do it. And I find myself doing that a lot in graduate school now. Like I'm critical of everything. I question everything and I can see how that's going to make me a great scientist later on. So definitely a skill that I learned is to ask questions, be critical of everything and use the resources around you never feel like you're too good to go to anything that's going to help you be a better student so definitely that's it tenny you and i are right here we're we're right here when i tell you oh like once you learn to put pride aside and you ask for help it changes the game in college like we're we're right in sync everybody if you need a book on how to get straight A's and teaching yourself how to learn it's linked below as well but Tenny is 100% correct there will be challenging classes but you cannot and should not think you can do it alone if your grades are screaming for help then go seek the help if you don't understand I don't want to say you're paying these people to help you but you're paying these people to help you so let them help you yeah yes. Tenny where do you see yourself in five years Okay, in five years. Okay, let's first, I first really hope this pandemic ends soon because it's really slowing things down. But in five years, I hope to be done with my PhD or at least in the stages of wrapping up and finishing my dissertation um, and applying to postdoctorate programs. So I'm interested in academia, biotech industry, and also regulatory science. So hopefully finding some type of postdoc that can really combine all of my interests together in one way, shape, or form would be um amazing so definitely finishing up with my phd applying to postdoctoral programs and seeing where that takes me oh tenny i wish you all the best in your endeavors and i 100 percent know that you are going to accomplish everything that you mentioned is there anywhere that my followers can follow you on social media um you all should definitely follow me on my science twitter at tenniala.i i literally just joined science twitter i realized i used to like downplay it but science twitter is a really good place to network meet people and it really pumps you up and motivates you to continue on in your path um of getting a stem phd so definitely follow me on science twitter and just if you need any more information feel free to hit me up on there and also the penn state millennium scholars program has a facebook page and also a regular website if you just google it so definitely go on there for more information and yeah just take a hold of this opportunity for all the high schoolers out there and just see where it takes you y'all please follow tenny on twitter <laughs> like it's somewhere on the screen so definitely please follow her Tenny, thank you so much for coming and talking about the Penn State Millennium Scholars Program. I hope everyone was able to take something away from this. Thank you so much, Tenny. Thank you for having me. So that is the end, everyone. Please take 30 seconds out of your day to fill out and join my nutrition mailing list if that interests you. Um, the links to all my favorite scholarships, products, books are linked below as well. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, PhD roadies, and I will see you on the road. Bye!